Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to go over a couple of three gun stages for you. I'm going to be breaking down stage by stage just the different concepts and how I shot it as well as some of the rules and just kind of some of the concepts behind like what goes into you know shooting these matches and just kind of going from there. So this was at a recent multi-gun match that I shot over in Parma, Idaho. It was the Aero Precision Multi-Gun Challenge. A course description for each stage, they have different starting positions and where you can shoot some, some targets and where you can't. There are designated targets per gun. For example, there's slug steel that are usually about 50 yards away. There's pistol paper, there's pistol steel, there's rifle paper rifle spinners, um, poppers, clays. In this particular stage, you can see that I had to start inside the vehicle and I had to shoot slugs downrange about 50 yards. Uh, since I can't shoot slugs with other, other steel targets because they're too close, I had to change magazines that was filled with birdshot and then I can engage what is necessary from the vehicle and then you can see there is lines designating the shooting area where you can and cannot engage targets. You can see that some of these poppers, is what we call them, have flyers on them. So when the popper goes down, you have a clay pigeon that comes up that you have to shoot in the air. Now, uh, I shoot long guns left-handed, so sometimes I run the stages a little bit different than other people do. Typically, in every stage, you have certain targets that are designated shotgun. You have a dump box, is where you put your shotgun safely down, and then you go to, which is this next bay, and you engage rifle. So again, there's the rifle is stationed in the dump box and it's typically, uh, sometimes it's cruiser ready, which means a magazine is inserted, but there's not one in the chamber. So most of the time you have to pick it up, rack one in, and then engage your targets as necessary. As far as engaging these targets, you can kneel, you can go prone, just as long as you stay within the confines of the shooter's box, then you're totally fine um, to engage those targets. Since I shoot open division, I actually have a rifle scope and I have a red dot at a 45 degree cant on my rifle. So some of these closer paper targets, I usually just cant my rifle to the side and it's just a little bit easier engagement, a little bit faster to see that red dot versus trying to engage a target with my rifle scope. You safely put your rifle in the dump box, which that means either safety on or the gun is completely clear. And then you can grab your pistol and engage targets as required. So in this stage, it had a pistol spinner, which is fun and can be frustrating at the same time. With any kind of spinner, depending on the stage description, you typically just have to spin it once completely over. There was a couple of steel targets and a couple paper targets, and then of course the spinner. You'll also notice that with the spinner, they did something a little bit nasty and they put a red plate behind that bottom spinner plate as you can see. So if you hit that red plate, that's actually considered a no shoot or a penalty and you get marked points off and it's actually adds time to your score. As far as multi-gun scoring goes, it's usually time plus. So what that means is that you have a, to shoot the stage and you get timed obviously for how long it takes. And then each penalty you have is added seconds to your score. So for example, when I was talking about the no shoot plate, if you hit it, uh, that could be five seconds extra, 10 seconds extra added to your time. When it comes to pistol targets and rifle paper targets, it's two hits anywhere or one in the alpha zone. You can see here on a standard 
cardboard target. You have these perf perforations, which is the A, and then you have a C, and then you have a D, and you also have an A zone up here. So in USPSA, each of these scoring areas are actually different points. But when it comes to multi-gun, it's two anywhere. So even if you get one way down here and way up here, you've neutralized the target. Or alternatively, you could hit one in the A zone, and technically that's also a neutralization of target. If you only hit one, let's say in the C zone right here, that is my uh, plus five points, which is technically a penalty. There's other larger penalties, like for example, if I failed to spin that spinner, which I did, <laughs> uh, it's actually plus 20 seconds on your score. All right, in this next stage, I actually start with my pistol. So you can see that I will start engaging these knockovers or just uh, steel target, pistol targets. Um, this particular stage required uh, to have our rifle slung, which not all multi-gun stages have that. Parma is kind of a awesome special match where they do a lot of fun stuff like that. Obviously, I've played the tactical games a little bit. I'm very familiar with slinging my rifle, so this wasn't any issues. There's also a couple of targets where they're flashers. They won't actually knock over, but they'll just like pop back up. Typically with those, you have to engage those twice, whether that's shotgun, pistol, sometimes rifle. Typically those flashers, you have to engage them twice. From here, you can see that I'm shooting a really far target. So these targets over here actually give you the option. You can shoot two pistol rounds, or is it, it was two or either four pistol rounds at these 50 yard targets, um, with, again with your pistol, or you had the option to shoot them with your shotgun slugs. So it's typically one each or two each for your shotgun slugs, and then I think it was four hits each target if you decide to do pistol. From here, you safely dump your pistol and then you run over and you pick up your shotgun, which again is typically in cruiser ready. This is my Saiga 12. Uh, the magazine capacity on this is 20. <laughs> and then I also have a couple of 12 round magazines that I have as backup or, you know, to shoot because as you can see, there's a lot of shotgun targets. From here, I dump my shotgun, and what is required with this is there's a couple of steel targets on top of that hill. You can kind of see them way off in the distance there. Uh, they might be 100 yards, I'm not exactly sure, but you have to engage those twice, two hits each. And then there's other targets that are actually on the other hillside that you have to shoot through the barrel. and. Um, there's not really a difference between shooting on top or through the barrel, but shooting through the barrel does make kind of a cool noise. Now, I'm not going to show you every single stage today. There was about eight of them, I think, for another time. But I will show you this last video that I shot, and it's actually only in first person view. So, yes, we had to start in a Porta John, a Sandy Can, whatever you want to call it. We had to start inside and we had to shoot from inside. So we, so what I did and you can't see is I actually kicked open the door, held it with my foot and engaged the targets as required. So in this one, in this actual stage, there was right-handed targets and then there was left-handed targets. You can kind of see I'm doing something a little bit wonky with my pistol because technically I could shoot everything strong-handed and then what they said is the left targets you had to shoot with your left hand. So typically, in, if you shoot right or left-handed or strong side or weak side pistol, you actually aren't allowed to brace with your other hand. So in this case, they said you could. So what I did is obviously just shot with my normal support hand. And then what I did is I just transferred to the other side and shot it with my right hand being my support side, which I've never done before 
I've never practiced that. I'm sure I've shot strong hand just single. And let me tell you, that was totally weird because um, never done it before, done it on the fly, right? And it didn't actually work out very well. I probably should have just took my hand away and just shot with my left side only because I'm used to that. So from here, you safely dump your pistol and then you hustle over to the next bay where you pick up your rifle and you have designated targets. Um, these are probably maybe 100 yards uh, down at the other side. I had to engage uh, the two paper and then there were steel targets, a couple flashers down on the end of or down on the back of the berm. So I had to shoot the right side with using my strong side and then I had to transfer over and shoot my shoot the left side with my left side. And what's more confusing about this stage is because my strong side is my left side, so I shot with my left side the right targets and the left targets with my right side. <laughs> So then we go to the shotgun, which was a really big pain in the butt. You can't really see it too much in this video, but I am balancing on a log. So the log's probably, I mean, it's it's pretty good size, but um, you know, walking and shooting off of that would probably be fine, but then you're shooting a shotgun off of it, which is extremely difficult because um, shotgun have a lot of kick so the first couple shots that i took it actually knocked me off the log like i had to you know stumble back and then get back up and you just kind of have to remember to really lean in because you gotta you know compensate for that kick right all right so kind of like in the first one here i had to first engage slug targets it was one hit each so what i did is i loaded my magazine um with slug tar with slug rounds i engaged those slugs and then i just did a magazine change which i had bird shot in the rest of my magazines you can kind of see some of these targets also have the flyers as well so trying to balance on the log shoot the targets and then be stable enough to be on the log to shoot the flyers so if you miss a flyer if you miss a clay pigeon again that is more time added to your score and then there's also a penalty like for example if you uh, slip off the log or if you have to step down off the log and you fire a shot that is also a procedural all right guys real quick rundown of my gear because i know you're gonna ask I have my SIG X5 Legion. It is customized by Springer Precision. Sexy, right? Has a very awesome magwell. Magwells are completely legal in open division. It has the max sight on it. And then of course, what is not my awesome gear with a unicorn and a purple magazine base pad. Next up, we have my Stag rifle. If you guys didn't know, I am part of the Stag shooting team. So this is my left-handed Stag rifle, and it is amazing. It does need a little bit purple, more purple, though, I will say that. So I have the Vortex Razor on it. It's the H Razor HD, left-handed port. Got a loose buttstock. And then of course, what isn't a rifle without a high cap magazine? And look at that, Springer came through again. Last but not least, I have my Saiga 12. This Saiga was customized by r, &R Target. It has been a pretty good rifle, a pretty good shotgun for me so far. Adjustable buttstock here. It's got a mid barrel comp that uh, helps the kick a little bit, but you know, not always. And then of course my big magazine which is 20 rounds so all right guys if you have any questions just let me know ask me in the comments section thank you for watching and also check out the links i will put them in the description box there are links to the companies that i work with 
Uh, you should definitely give them a look. They uh, keep me going. They support me through all my shooting adventures. So check them out and I'll check you guys later.